dude acting crazy. He's not crazy. He's just passionate with big ideas. The Dory Monson Show on Cairo Radio. This is The Big Lead. Coming to you from the Carter Subaru studio. Welcome. Welcome to our top stories this hour. And yes, as we have been talking about throughout the day, you just heard it again in Aaron's newscast, a lot of us are stunned that the State Department of Transportation turned down when Snoqualmie Pass was closed for several days. They turned down an offer from Kittitas County to provide equipment and manpower to help clear the roads. Let's get right to our big lead. The big lead, top story. And Kittitas County Commissioner Laura Oshaditz joins us live here on the Dory Monson Show. Commissioner, I appreciate you taking the time. Thanks for coming on with me today. Thank you for having me. I think one reason why this story has blown up is we're not used to seeing intergovernmental squabbling, but when Kittitas County sent out that press release yesterday, saying that you had offered help, it sounded like you guys were really ticked off at the state DOT. Is that an accurate read on things? You know, I wouldn't say we were ticked off. I think we got to a point where we see that our community is suffering. We're seeing people need help, and DOT is short-staffed. And we're a county, a rural county, where... Um, when people need help, we we try to jump in and lend a hand. And when we see people that are needing assistance and we're turned down, I guess, you know, our jaws dropped and, and we really didn't know how else to respond, but felt it was our responsibility to let the people within our communities know why operations weren't working as swiftly as they could be well and that's what i thought about right away because my my colleagues on the air right after me john curley he lives in cleallum and uh, a tree came through the the roof of his cabin uh last year and Mm -hmm. he told the story about how his neighbors came with with their backhoes and uh, their equipment and their chainsaws and they just helped right away could be and i do think that that is a trend of places like Kittitas County, rural people, you have to learn to be somewhat self-sufficient. And even though you are a government commissioner, I think people learn to rely on themselves more than they do the government to get things done. And and what you just said was exactly what I thought of. So tell me, uh, and let's go back to the very beginning, because last November, you as a county and state DOT entered into an agreement to help out because you recognized the possibility that there were going to be some real problems with all the people who had been fired because of the vaccine mandates, correct? Correct. Yeah. The Washington State Department of Transportation actually reached out to Kittitas County to see, um, you know, looking into the future, knowing winter was coming, if we would be able to offer assistance if need be. And so we gladly um, signed the mutual aid agreement or the interlocal agreement with um, the Washington State Department of Transportation at that time, thinking that if there was an event that needed additional resources, we had those resources available, we would gladly um, lend a helping hand to get through tough times. And uh, I don't think anybody could anticipate the sheer amount of snow that hit all of you in the the last couple of weeks. But still, so you had this agreement in place. And so you offered to hold up your end of the agreement. So can you tell me how the offer of aid was extended by your county and how it was rejected by state DOT? Yeah, um, so... You know, it wasn't the commissioner's office. It was our public work staff um, that reached out to the Washington State Department of Transportation um, saying, hey, you know, we have streets that intersect, uh, especially in the the identified location. And and what brought this all all to um, this point is the community of Ronald, where State Route 903 goes through 
uh, many of the county roads. And at that point in time, we saw identified that the state could use some of our help. Um, we offered that, um, knowing that we were already going to be in that location. It would be uh, efficiency. It would be working efficiently to get the job done. Um, but at that time, we were we were told essentially thanks, but no thanks. And did they tell you it was because of you, you do not have the same vaccine mandate that Jay Inslee has imposed on state workers? That is correct. And, and, and actually, they confirmed that in the press release that the Washington State Department of Transportation released in response to what was um, initially released by the county. Here's what blows my mind about this. First of all, the vaccine mandate has not done much to stem the tide. People are still getting COVID. People are still transmitting COVID who have been fully vaccinated and boosted. Uh, it just doesn't seem to be doing And even Bill Gates came out yesterday and said, this vaccine isn't very effective for Omicron, uh, which it's not. They're putting a piece of paper or they're, and I guess this is political ideology. They're putting that ahead of the common sense of let's keep the roads open. And, and when government puts a document and ideology above the people that they're supposed to be serving, that's infuriating to me. And that sounds to me like people at the state level who simply are not doing the job that we elected them to do. Yeah, um, you know, I, I can't disagree. I think that's, that's how a lot of people feel. That's certainly how the Board of County Commissioners feel. Um, you know, we never thought we would be in a situation where um, a government agency um, had a policy in place or, or was directed by p policymakers to make this sort of decision where essentially they're putting um, politics above people. Now, you don't have a vaccine mandate like the state has. Do you have a, a testing option? What, what do you do for your workers who don't uh, have the vaccine? Can they, can they test weekly or do you just not enforce any aspect of it? We, we don't enforce um, the aspect, and, um, uh, but we do have, uh, we have been extremely successful. And we, you know, as, as you know, within the state, masking is required within the county. We follow all of the state's requirements as far as masking goes within Kittitas County. Um, I can tell you myself personally, um, I have received the vaccination. It's not that I'm somebody that is, you know, completely opposed to the vaccination, but I also think people should have a choice. And, 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 and you know, although this isn't about that, um, I just, it's, it's, it's not that the county made this decision to try to, you know, to, to stick it to the state and, and make this some kind of a, a vaccine um, uh, statement although the decision made had to do with that, yeah, it really had yeah. to do with, hey, you know, this makes absolutely no sense for the people we serve. Can we, you know, let's put our, you know, our own um, personal egos aside and let's do what's best for the people. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any idea how many of your public works employees are vaccinated on a percentage basis? Any idea? You know, um, I, 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 I don't know. Specifically, I have been told roughly 40%. Okay. All right. So, uh, so, so nearly half would have been vaccinated anyway. So then the state DOT, they hired a private contractor to, to do what you offered to do. Were you going to charge the DOT if you helped out? There, there, is, there is a cost associated with it. I mean, typically um, it's, it's less of a fee when there, it's already – it, you know, when it's it's a municipality, but um, there is a fee associated with that, yes. Okay, but as I understand it, they went out and for either one or two days' work, they gave a private contractor $40,000 to do mm -hmm. the job that your county offered to do. They also, this private company, doesn't have a vaccine mandate. They, they tell their workers that you can either get the vaccine or take a test to prove you're, you're COVID-free. So... So they said they turned you down because you don't have a vaccine mandate, and then they hired a private company that doesn't have a vaccine mandate. Do I have all this correct? Because this sounds insane to me. 
Yeah, so I actually don't know the status of the company. So that, okay. that's something I haven't researched. Um, so I, I, you could be correct, um, in, in, but I, I have not done the research on the private contractor. Okay, got it. All right, so uh, roads are open. Is the pass flowing again? It is. Um, okay. Actually, I, I traveled over I-90 yesterday uh, for a doctor's appointment. But um, so the roads are open and, um, you know, things are, are, are flowing, but it's still, you know, the middle of January. This is typically our worst month. And so we still have sure. a long winter ahead of us, uh, possibly. And I hope, you know, this will bring some attention to policymakers to really um, reanalyze some of some of the policies in place to best serve the public. Well, there were thousands of trucks that were stranded. There, I mean, a, a lot of our supply shortage issues have been, you know, thousands of packed trucks that couldn't get to marketplace. There were people, maybe like you, who had a, a more serious doctor's appointment that uh, maybe couldn't get the medical care that they needed. And this is why I'm so shocked at all of this, Commissioner, that that they actually put a COVID document above the people and the commerce of this state. So uh, yeah. I really appreciate you and the county speaking out. Like I said, it's unusual to see some squabbling like this, but I also think that it's absolutely critical that you guys as a county stepped up and said, we offered to help, we got turned down, because I think people need to know the kind of decision-making and how illogical it is right now in our state. Yeah, absolutely. And and I, I'm not sure if I stated this earlier, but we were well aware that by releasing the statement, it wasn't going to go over well with the state. Um, but we put, I mean, as a county, um, the current Board of County Commissioners, we put not only the safety and welfare of the people against their personal politics, but we also um, believe if if services aren't being delivered, people need to know why. Amen. Yeah. Okay. You. I was. I thought I was done, but you inspired one last question. You said you knew it wasn't going to go over well. What did DOT or the governor's office say to you guys after you released this? What kind of feedback did you get? I didn't receive any feedback so far. All really? I've seen is a press release. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I bet they were talking behind your backs, though. I don't know. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I. I would. I just. Uh, it's, um, you know, we don't like to, we don't like to make waves. Um, and I did not anticipate this to blow up the way it did. Um, but again, uh, people need to know yep. what their elected officials are doing because we work for the people. Yep. Yep. So I agree with you hundred percent. And I really appreciate it because making waves is what I do for a living. So I'm really okay. glad. <laughs> yes. okay. All right, commissioner. It's good talking with you. Thanks for coming on with me today. All right, thank you. Okay, Kittitas County Commissioner Laura O'Shawitz. O'Shawitz, pardon me. Uh, unbelievable. Jay Inslee and uh, and Millar, the head is Larry Larry Millar. I can't remember his first name. Uh, the head of DOT. They they refuse help to clear the highways because they didn't have a vaccine mandate in Kittitas County. Uh, they've lost their souls. They're putting their piece of paper above the physical and financial well-being of the state and they should get grilled for this up next